here now with more on his announcement that he will be sending National Guard troops to Texas, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Uh, Governor, great to have you back. I know you stuck with me now. I apologize in advance, but I, I vote the right way, and I didn't bring any New York uh, opinions with me, I promise you. Uh, it's great to be in the free state well, of Florida. just so you know, Sean, just so you know, we just got ranked uh, a couple days ago number one in America for the places to retire. And just for the record, that is after you relocated here. So I think that's the Hannity effect in action. I write, Florida, I'm right. Florida number a big... one for retirement yet again. If I had a dollar for every person that I know that contacted me and said, I'm following you, I'm going to be down there, I'm, I'm going to be right behind you, uh, I'd, I'd be pretty wealthy. Well, you picked um, a good spot. Obviously, but, uh, the governance that you're seeing here is, is miles different than what you saw in New York. And this oh border gosh. is actually a good issue. I mean, Bill Malugin pointed out, we were the first. We set, we've sent people continuously since 2021. As soon as Biden reversed policies, as soon as he embraced an open border, we knew this was going to be a big issue. So we've responded to calls from Texas throughout the years. Uh, and then I think with this issue with this wire and the fortifications, I just wanted to make sure if we could send additional personnel to help Texas put up as much of this wire or barricades as possible to be able to drive those numbers to zero, well, I'm going to step up and do it. I think they're doing the absolute right thing by standing their ground. They have every right to defend the sovereignty of their state. And yes, we've seen massive numbers of people flooding New York City. We've seen crime, drugs, all that stuff is very significant, but it's also a fundamental issue. A country has borders. If you don't have a border, you are not a country. And Biden has failed at his duty as commander in chief uh, to make sure our laws are faithfully executed. So we have every right as states to band together and do the job that the federal government refuses to do. You know, look, we see this a lot of, with states during natural times of natural disaster. If you have the hurricane in Florida, you know, how many electric companies from around the country will descend on Florida to help you get your power up and running as quickly as possible? Uh, and they'll stage outside of wherever that hurricane's landing, and they'll be there to help. I really believe that this Friday deadline that Joe Biden had put out there I'm not sure he might not—I'm not sure he wouldn't have acted had it not been for people like you and every other Republican governor coming out, speaking out, supporting Governor Abbott, and standing in solidarity with him, because at that point, there was strength in numbers, and, and you were one of the first out of the box to do it. Uh, I think that played a big role. Well, not only that, I mean, you have a situation where just imagine the political optics, Sean— to have the federal government forcibly removing barriers and then letting people flood in illegally. I mean, it's absolutely insane. You know, we've had people on the ground now for a number of years, and uh, I was able to talk about some of the stories that our personnel have reported. There was an illegal alien that took a one-year-old baby and threw the baby into the Rio Grande to try to lure a boat to come so that he could jump on the boat and get across the border. There was a woman with him, threw a four-year-old in. So the boat had to come and rescue these people, didn't let him come across the border, of course. But the fact that you see stuff like this, his policy is not only bad for America, it's a humanitarian disaster. I think one of the interesting moments when you debated Gavin Newsom here on this show is when we were talking about the issue of sanctuary states, illegal immigration, and when you had gotten people to sign permission slips before you sent them to Martha's Vineyard, where, by the way, they were thrown off that island in less than 24 hours, even though our team investigated and there were rooms for every one of them, but they went voluntarily, uh, and, and he thought that maybe you should be investigated for kidnapping. Uh, that was a pretty humorous in the moment yeah, to me ridiculous. anyway. Well, but the thing about it, though, is, is, you know, you the reason why we have open borders is because of liberal elites in this country. It's ideological, and it's fine for them to do it when they don't have to suffer any consequences of it. But as you saw with the Martha's Vineyard, once 50 illegal aliens showed up, it was like a major crisis, and they got them off that island. And you're right, it wasn't even in season, so they had massive numbers of rooms. Manhattan, they used to virtue signal when Trump was president about how everybody's welcome, nobody's illegal. Then you start to have people there, it, it crimps the services, 
And so now they're complaining about it. So I think what all this has just shown is open borders doesn't work. You have liberal Democrat voters now throughout this country who agree with us, which was not the case five or six years ago. So let's get this job done. Uh, I hope Congress will authorize the funding of the border wall. Um, and, and I hope that Biden will uh, be shamed into actually taking action, although I definitely wouldn't put money on that. Now, you do have to wonder, I mean, with the razor wire and the other barricades that Governor Abbott and Texas have put up, and, and by the way, you, you're assisting. I know Governor Kristi Noem has pledged to send down razor wire so they can build more barriers. Uh, but if you listen to Bill Malusian's report, you know, he's talking about now the illegal immigration uh, problem is lessening in Texas, and it's now ratcheting up in Arizona and California. Now, my advice to illegal immigrants, if they're going to pick a state, they should pick the friendliest state. That's Gavin Newsom's state. I think every single illegal immigrant should make their way to California. Gavin is promising free health care for every illegal immigrant. Uh, you're not going to be sent back. It's, it's sanctuary. You'll never be asked your status. And you get free health care courtesy of California taxpayers. I think Gavin is basically saying they will California treat you is better wide open. As an illegal alien, they'll treat you better as an illegal alien if you show up in California than they will if, if you or I showed up, Sean, as just American citizens. And think about what we're now seeing <laughs> at airports. That's probably true. Uh, if you want to go into airport through TSA, uh, you've got to obviously show ID. They, they search you all this stuff. These illegals, they don't even have photo ID, and they're allowed to go and fly on commercial air flights. Uh, so they actually have preferential treatment in this country, which is just a total farce. So yes, California would be the place to go. But however, Sean, I will say this, we're all Americans. We're gonna continue to fortify Texas. I'd like to see those numbers go to zero. But if California actually wants to stop people coming across the border, I'm happy to send to California as well, because ultimately, I want the whole border secure. Texas is the first step, but we need all states to have secure borders. I, listen, I think that would extend your friendship with Governor Newsom. Um, look, look, what is law enforcement in, in Florida? For example, in these sanctuary cities and states, you're not allowed to ask somebody's status. Um, if somebody gets pulled over, they don't have an ID, they don't have anything, and 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 maybe they're from a, for another country. Maybe they can't communicate with a police officer. Uh, do, do, do law enforcement in Florida have the right to check their status? And if they are in the country illegally, what is Florida doing? Of course, we, we are not a sanctuary state and we have banned sanctuary cities. And so if you have a criminal alien in possession, for example, ICE has a detainer, uh, they have to, under state law, turn the criminal alien over to ICE. I brought up the incidents when we had the debate with Gavin um, what, that you moderated. There was a criminal alien who had been deported multiple times in L.A. There was an ICE detainer that wanted to take this criminal alien and deport, and it had been multiple crimes. L.A. refused to honor the detainer, so instead of turning him over to federal immigration authorities, they released the criminal alien into the community. What happened? That criminal illegal alien murdered the mother of a three-year-old child. So these policies yeah. are dangerous. Uh, we don't support that in Florida. And if our local governments uh, would try to be sanctuary, we would have uh, recourse because it violates Florida law. I really mean this. I, I think if it wasn't for you and the other Republican governors coming to the aid of Governor Abbott, um, I really think Joe Biden was setting up a potential confrontation between Border Patrol and Texas National Guard. And I, I don't even like the thought of it. Um, and thankfully, the CBP or officers are like, no way. They, they are our fellow law enforcement. We respect what they're doing. We appreciate what they're doing. So it didn't work out the way Joe wanted. Governor, good to see you. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.